In the previous video, we discussed about the tall like receptor proteins, their structure, their function, and its types. Now, in this video, we'll be discussing about the TLR signaling pathway that involves different types of tall like receptor proteins in driving the signaling pathway upon ligand binding. These TLR or tall like receptor proteins recognize ligands or molecules that are shared by pathogens. Like we have LPS molecules that is component of a cell membrane from gram negative bacteria. So upon ligand binding with TLR, the signaling pathway is driven that leads to activation of innate immune system. Before getting into the pathway, first of all let's see what are the different modes of TLR signaling pathways. This pathway is driven through two ways. One is the my d 8 dependent pathway and second one is the trip dependent pathway. The first one that's my d 8 dependent pathway leads to production and activation of pro-inflammatory cytokinase and chemokinase. Whereas the trip dependent pathway leads to production and activation of type 1 interferons. Now let's see the pathway in detail. Here in this diagram we have the cell membrane. It has got two monomers of TLR4 as shown in the diagram. And these two monomers of TLR are associated with MD2 molecules. We also have CD14 molecule on the cell membrane as shown in the diagram. Now within the extracellular fluid we have the LBP that's lipopolysaccharide binding protein. And now to drive the signaling pathway we have LPS molecule from pathogen. It's a structural component of gram negative bacteria. Now first of all this LPS molecule from pathogen binds with the LPB that's lipopolysaccharide binding protein shown in the diagram. Then this LBP protein takes the LPS molecule and gives it to the CD14 as shown in the animation on cell membrane. So we have LPS now with CD14 molecule and this CD14 molecule interacts with MD2 TL4 complex. And in that interaction the LPS molecule is given to the MD2 protein which then delivers it to the TL4 protein directly as shown in the animation. Now first of all after ligand binding that's when LPS binds with the TLR monomers we get the dimerization of TLR monomers as shown in the animation. That ultimately leads to activation of intracellular TIR domains of TLR4 proteins which then drives the activation of downstream proteins for signaling process. Then we see here is that the activated TIR domain of TLR4 receptor recruits and activates the TIRAP protein which then recruits my d 8 protein and activates it. Then this my d 8 recruits IRAK1, IRAK4 complex and activates it. And this complex then recruits TRAF6 molecule as shown in the animation. Now we also see here that type 2 protein binds with TRAF6 protein. And in turn this type 2 binds TAG1 protein, thereby bridging the TRAF6 with TAG1. And finally activating the TAG1 protein. Now this TAG1 activates more downstream molecules. Here first of all it activates the IKK protein complex, which has kinase activity. Let's keep this activated IKK protein here. On the other hand we see NFKB protein associated with IKBA protein. This IKBA masks the nuclear localization signal of NFKB protein with which NFKB is not able to get into the nucleus. So to free the NFKB from IKBA protein we have just activated the IKK protein. This IKK protein phosphorylates the IKBA protein and marks it for degradation. In that way IKBA protein is degraded by proteasomes. Now from here the NFKB is free to go into the nucleus as its NLS signal has been unmasked. And here we can see the NFKB moves into the nucleus and on DNA it drives the transcription of genes that produce pro-inflammatory cytokinase and chemokinase. So we can say NFKB acts as a transcription factor. Furthermore we have another signaling branch coming from TAG1 protein. As you can see in this diagram, this TAG1 protein activates the MAPKs which in turn activates JNK protein and this JNK ultimately phosphorylates and activates the AP1 transcription factor which gets into the nucleus and drives the transcription of pro-inflammatory cytokinase and chemokinase. So this concludes the my d 8 dependent pathway. Now let's get to the trip dependent pathway. 
First of all, TRAM protein is recruited to TIR domain of TLR4 protein, which then recruits and activates the TRIP protein. From here, TRIP can activate two different proteins. It activates RIP1 protein and TRAP3 protein. Let's first proceed with the TRAF3 protein. The activated TRAP3 protein further activates the TBK1 protein, which is associated with IKKI complex. And from here, TBK1 activates the IRF3 protein complex, which is interferon regulatory transcription factor. Upon activation, it gets into the nucleus and we get the transcription of type 1 interferons. And this concludes our trip dependent pathway. But we have still RIP1 activated in the middle of trip dependent pathway, as shown in the diagram. This RIP1 activates the IKK complex and rest is the same pathway from here while we get the activation of NFKB factor. So, this is what TLR signaling is and the two different pathways of TLR signaling. I hope you like the video. If you like it, give it a thumbs up. Do consider support my work on Patreon or YouTube and make sure to subscribe to this channel. Thanks.